I appreciate from the bottom of my heart all the audience who have gathered here to be part of TEDx Rajendra Park. Uh, and since I have observed that I am the only speaker who has come all the way from uh, Mumbai to Jammu, uh, while journeying, I guess I have lost some of my knowledge of the topic that I am speaking today. So please excuse me if I keep referring to my prepared notes. Today I will be talking about artificial intelligence. Uh, specifically, I will be talking about an issue in artificial intelligence uh, with its development, will it lead to degradation of reasoning ability of we human beings. Artificial intelligence today has many definitions. The simplest definition of AI says it is a program to make a computer or a software think intelligently like human beings. Today artificial intelligence can do a lot of activities which are generally associated with human beings. Uh, like uh, speech recognition, face recognition, language translation and it can recommend you some books, films, songs, shopping sites as well. Artificial intelligence can also drive your cars. It can be your smart personal assistant. It can do almost everything or it's on the verge of doing anything that human body or human beings are capable of doing. But there are some issues with artificial intelligence today. Issues related to privacy, related to law, to governance and most importantly to ethics. What these issues could be, we will talk about it through an example, through a very important development in AI. In the year 2017, Google developed an AI program called AlphaGo Zero. Now AlphaGo Zero is a program which is capable of playing a game called Go. By the way, Go is a Chinese board game. It looks like chess but it is much more complicated than chess. Arguably Go is the most complicated complex game known to us human beings today. An AlphaGo Zero AI program could play the game Go. You might be wondering, what's so novel about it? We all have heard computers playing games, program playing games, right? Wrong. The uniqueness of AlphaGo Zero lies in the way it plays the game. It plays the game in a manner it had been never played before. It doesn't play in the manner if this, then this. No, it doesn't play this way. Why? Because AlphaGo Zero wasn't trained by humans. It wasn't trained using data of games played by human beings. Then how was it trained? AlphaGo Zero was trained by itself. Yes, the AI program taught itself, self-taught. It played thousands of games with itself, learned from its mistake and refined its algorithm accordingly. It took into consideration thousands of variables, tried all possible permutations and combinations and came up with the best possible move. It did this thing recursively, continuously and in the process became the best player of the game in the world. Be it human, be it machine, it became the best player of the game. So now we have an AI program which didn't know about the game until some time ago, trains itself in the game and becomes the best player of the game all in a matter of 72 hours all by itself. This sounds very exciting, isn't it? This shows that human pursuit of knowledge still has a very long way to go. There are still unimagined vistas beyond the pale of current human knowledge. But at the same time, it raises few questions. Questions like, will machines continue to learn like AlphaGo Zero learns? Will they continue to learn in a manner which is much faster and much effective than ever before? What will happen if machines apply this new knowledge to an area 
for which there is no category of human understanding. Serious? What will happen if two or more machines learn to communicate with each other? These are very serious questions. We still don't have no, no definite answer to these questions. And when we do have answer to these questions, our idea of intellect, our idea of knowledge, our idea of reason will change forever. See, we human beings learn to reason through our experience of objects around us. In your childhood, you all must have had that curious tryst with objects which began your experience of science. Let me tell you one of my childhood stories. Uh, it was summer of late 90s. My grandparents had come to visit us and like their every visit, they had bought some gift for us. This time the gift were mechanical watches. For us three siblings, we were three kids, three mechanical watches. For the first time in my life, I was a proud owner of a mechanical watch. But the curious kid in me had some other you know, plans with that watch. I wanted to know, find out and understand what is in this tiny machine that it's making it you know, run so precisely. What is the secret in this small thing? So what I did in my excited quest, I opened the back cover of the watch, took out the machine, separated its every single part like a fine Swiss artisan. And I studied those parts, every single part for some time. But, you know, my quest didn't yield anything. No result, no finding, nothing. I didn't understand the working of the watch. What do I do now? I took my brother's watch. Repeated the experiment. Same result, no finding, nothing. Now, I thought I have come, you know, very near to finding something. What I did, I repeated the experiment now on my sister's watch. Third watch, yes. Same result, no finding, no eureka moment, nothing. I didn't find anything that day. But that evening, I did find something else. I found actually how it feels when one is severely beaten by broom by one's mother. <laughs> <coughs> Jokes apart, the point that I'm trying to bring home is, we human beings are such a great creators of knowledge because of this desire to understand why things are the way they are. But today we do not live in a mechanical world. We live in an era which is dominated by digital technologies. There is little to be learned by taking things apart. Actually, when we move in future, we will have very little to be learned from the products of technology. Why? Because these products will be super efficient. They will do things in such a beautiful manner, such a great manner, such efficient manner that we will have no questions to them. And with the advancement in data analytics, with the passage of time, we will have such self-learning algorithm around us and we will not be very much aware of it. Now, if this unquestioned learning of algorithm without any real input of human knowledge goes on, will there be any incentive for we human beings to question things? Why will human beings undertake research? Why, why will be a kid curious to know working of his mechanical watch? The very idea of knowledge the very idea of reasoning might become redundant. Having said this, we still do not know if machines will keep learning and if machines are aspiring to have human-like intelligence. We are not sure. Also, we are not sure that if we will just need to trust machines, just believe in their good intentions, we do not know. Also, we do not know if human rationality will find a way beyond what we see today. 
or as a Swedish philosopher Nick Bostrom has said, will machine intelligence be the last invention that humanity will need to make? Thank you. Thank you very much.